How's everybody doing? My name is Akram Khaled, and in this episode, we're gonna take the time to figure out how we can create page transitions using React and Framer Motion. Now, the transition in particular is one that's been requested quite a few times, and it's one that kind of has a seamless effect when it goes from one page, when it goes from one page to another page. So if you think of an image that changes size, you want it to click, or you want to click on that image and you want to change sizes on that image. A uh, better explanation is what you see on the screen now. Uh, so you can see that it kind of changes the position of the image as, as well as the scale, and it's a pretty seamless effect. Now this is a very popular effect, and a lot of high quality websites do use this kind of effect, so you could possibly turn your garbage site into a really cool one. I don't mean to call it garbage, I'm sure it's amazing. So if you're excited, let's go ahead and jump into the code where we'll break down the project files and get started. Now before jumping into the code, I need to discuss how this effect kind of works. Now it isn't a perfect effect in terms of getting this image from point A to point B where it's full screen, simply because we are transitioning pages as well. Using React Router, we're switching over to a different page or different directory. Right now we're on localhost 3000, and then when we click on the image, it takes us to localhost 3000 forward slash model forward slash Yasmin Thodic, which supposedly is the model's name, but I am not 100% sure her at was uh, not available, but it seemed to resemble this, which was her name. Anyway, so the way that the effect works is it's not so much the same image being translated or transformed in terms of scale and position. It's more of the fact that when we transition to this next page, we are replicating the initial screen and then we're transforming to this final state. So in Framer Motion, we have uh, three properties that we primarily focus on, which is an initial, an animate, and an exit. Uh, and so the initial here describes or kind of replicates how our homepage screen looks like. And then the animate will then animate to its final stage, which looks like so. So to better describe it, I'm gonna head over to our XD project, which is where I designed the initial mock for this. And what I mean by this is that in localhost 3000, which is a left screen, we've got this image here. And then in the initial state of our second page, we have the exact same image, which is this down here. The only thing is we're serving this image initially. And then once the page has loaded or finished loading, it then transforms um, into the position that it's in. Of course, it's not like this, but that is the general idea. Uh, the idea is our initial state of the second page is closely resembling the um, the exact same way that the initial screen looks like. So it's kind of copying how that previous screen looked like and then taking action on how it, uh, how it acts. And to better describe or demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is head over into app.js and we have this initial false on our animate presence. And what this means is that Whenever we have initial false, that means anytime we refresh the page or load the page without transitioning into the page from another directory or another source, it's going to disable any initial animations. So in this case, if I switch to this screen here, we have that animation occurring, but if I refresh the page and I continue refreshing, it's just going to serve up the image without any initial animations. To get rid of that, we'll get rid of the initial false. And now every time we load this page, you can see it's going to have that effect, which, you know, kind of looks like it's transitioning um, or kind of, you know, loading and then transitioning to its final state. Now, you could have this. This is definitely possible. You could have it. Uh, but in terms of kind of getting the ultimate experience in terms of full on page transitions, I'm going to leave it as initial false just because we want our initial state and our final state, which is the different screen here. Uh, but again, it's totally up to you. I've seen a lot of websites where they have that exact same transitioning occurring and they do leave, you know, this effect where when you refresh the page or load the page itself, the animations occur. That's definitely up to you and it's all preference. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up in terms of how this actually works. Another way that we could take a look on how to achieve this effect is the following. Right now, the initial animations are all coming from the second page. Another way to take a look at it is if we leave the second page as is, but then all the animations come from the first page and we execute all the animations to when this page is exiting. Using animate presence, like I mentioned, you have enter or the initial, you have exit and animate. 
controlling the exit on the first screen, we could determine what should happen before loading the second screen. And we do that just a little bit on the text on the bottom. So if we go back to our project, head home, you can see that once I am ready to exit or move on to the next screen, the name and this uh, longitude, latitude, longitude latitude, um, which represents the location of where the image was taken, which I believe this is Orlando, Florida, um, it's going to disappear when we're exiting from the initial screen. So take a look now. When we click, that disappears. Then it is ready to transform to that uh, next page. And in the next page, initial animations, which is this, start to animate. So that's kind of how it works. It's pretty simple. It's not too uh, hard to do. Another thing that I wanted to discuss is just changing the image size here. We'll not have any issues in terms of the animation. So right now, if I switch this to a width of 600 and a height of 300, it'll look like so. But don't worry, transitioning to the next screen would still look fine. We'll click it and it just transforms like so. Let's do that one more time. Perfect, so changing the width and the height, we could do whatever we want and we will be fine with the end result. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and head over to the GitHub repo where we could clone the master if we wanted the final. But if you wanted to follow along, go ahead and clone the starter files. And then from there, we'll run npm install and npm run start. What I'm going to do is just switch our branch since I have the master branch cloned. I'll go ahead and write git checkout starter and that will switch me over to my starter branch and then run npm run start. Now, once that's done, we'll go ahead and close out of the console. And if we go to our project, what should happen is it should just transition to the next page immediately without any additional animations, which it does. Uh, now this is only using React Router and React, but here is where we're going to start adding frame or motion to add some page transitions. Let's go ahead and go back in our project. Now I already am providing the JSX, the React Router structure, as well as the SAS, so we're not going to focus on that. You can also jump to your images where we have a compressed version and a WebP format. If this was going to be a production version, such as going on either Firefox or Safari or IE, we are going to need to have fallbacks for these WebP or any browser that doesn't support WebP formats. But in our case, we're working in Chrome, and this is just to learn page transitions and not necessarily uh, WebP fallbacks. So if you want, you could switch to WebP fallbacks to push it to production. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to mention is inside of our homepage, Let's go to the components, not the components, but the pages folder. We have a home page, which represents our home page here. Uh, we do have a progressive image components, which is being uh, called in from React Progressive Image. And what this allows us to do is first load up a lower resolution or lower quality version of our image. And then once that image is ready to be loaded or is done loading, we're then going to load our higher quality image. This is part of the whole progressive loading to where we can load our web pages a lot faster without needing to have that ugly looking, um, you know, 2000s effect of images loading. So this is what progressive image represents. Now to get started with adding page transitions, the very first thing we need to look at is using animate presence with frame or motion. What animate presence allows us to do is it allows us to capture a component when they're removed from the react tree. So when a component is ready to be unmounted or removed, we can then animate out that component, which allows for that effect of page transitions. To get Animate Presence working, we're going to need to wrap Animate Presence in our app.js. We are wrapping the two routes that we have set up. So we're going to need to have it as a parent and we could do it fairly easily. So the thing that we need to first bring in is Animate Presence. We'll go ahead and import Animate Presence. And we're importing this from Framer Motion. If you are unfamiliar with React Router, I do recommend you to go watch a Basics React Router uh, video, and I'll link that in the description. There's a lot of great ones out there. Just get an understanding of how it works. You can also visit their website for their documentation. But essentially, what's happening here is we're wrapping our entire application in a router, which router is based off the browser router. And then we have a switch statement, which is going to render these different routes, which returns these components dependent on our path. So if we're on the path of 
the home, which is a forward slash. It's going to render our home component, which is located in the home pages directory. If we're rendering this model and we do have this ID, which allows us to enter uh, the different names. If we're going to have, you know, hundreds of models set up, we can uh, sort of do it dynamic to where it changes the path dynamically. Um, and then we render the data according to our model page. But since our model, if we go to this path and type in the model name, which is Yasmin, uh, Yasmin Thodic, it's going to then render this model component. Um, and then the image details are just props being passed, which image details represents the width and the height. Simple as that. So we've already got animate presence being imported. Let's go ahead and start using animate presence. To use it, we're going to return it within our route. So we can add animate presence here. And we're going to take the closing tags and add it at the end of our switch statement. The first prop we're going to pass is initial and we'll set that to false. And again, initial false disables the fact that animations will occur on a page if the page is refreshed or accessed for the first time uh, through that direct URL. And it doesn't necessarily need to be the first time, it can be multiple times, but if it's coming from an outside source or directly enter from the URL, initial uh, set to false will disable any of that. Animations will only occur if they are coming from a direct link. So that is the cool part there. And then we're also adding exit before enter. And it's pretty cool that VS Code has already given us information here. So let's just read this. If set to true, animate presence will only render one component at a time. The, the exiting component will finish its exit animation before entering a component is is rendered. So what this means is that we're not switching to this model screen or we're not loading a new component unless the first component, which is our home one, is exited completely. So it kind of just describes itself. So exit before enter will not allow any additional components to enter unless the exit component or the first component is completely out or unmounted from the React tree. We'll go ahead and save this. And this is all that needs to be done in the app.js. Uh, just setting up animate presence, adding the props that you would like to add. And then we're kind of just done here. We don't need to use the app.js anymore. We can go ahead and close out of that. We did have additional animations added to the home.js, such as when you hover on the image, it does kind of zoom out, but it only zooms the image. So let's add that. Let's go back in our project here, and then we can scroll to the top. Uh, now I could change this where we just import React from React. It doesn't need to have that asterisk. And now we do need to import motion from frame or motion, and we'll do just that. Once that's imported, what we can first work on is just creating that hover effect on our image. To do that, we can go directly to our image here, and then we'll need to turn this image to a motion component. And to turn uh, certain tags or anything to a motion component, we'll just add motion dot, and then describe or add the element property here. Um, or not property, the element name. So if it was an H1, it'll be motion H1, a div, it'll be motion div, etc. Right now we're working on the image, so it's motion image. Now the effect that we had is only occurring when we hover, and a property that Framer Motion has is while hover. What we want to do is just scale the image by 1.1. Originally, images are always scaled at one, adding 0.1 will then increase the size just slightly. So if we take a look here, hovering on the image is increasing the scale. However, I do have a huge problem with Framer Motion's default um, easing, and it's just way too snappy and bouncy, and maybe that's on purpose, but you know we don't need to deal with that. And here's what we could do. We can create a variable that then houses all of our easing and duration. We'll just call it transition. So const transition is equal to the following. We'll go ahead and set a duration, set to 0.6, and then our ease is going to be the following, and we'll use an array. We'll set this to 0.6, 0 0.01, negative 0 0.05, and a 0.9. And for us to use this ease, we could just add it right here. We can add transition, and then just pass transition. And then the transitions that the image will then use is related to the transitions uh, variable. So the duration as well as the easing. Back in our project, if we hover on our image now, you can see that it does use the transition. Now I do like this transition for when the image uh, zooms in, but I don't necessarily like it here for when we hover. It doesn't really work all that well. I prefer something else. And so a typical default of an 
uh, an ease is sort of like an ease in, ease out type of thing. And so we could just use the following, which is going to be 0 0.43, 0 0.13, and then 0.23, and we could erase the negative. And then the final is going to have a 0 0.96. So we'll save this, and then when we hover, it's just a lot smoother uh, for hovering on an image, which works a lot better. If we click the image, it's not going to transition to the next screen because we haven't really defined the exit properties just yet, and I'll get to that in a sec. So clicking on the image did change the URL, and the only way to access that URL is if we were to refresh. If we go back and head home, we can't move just yet. We can only refresh and it will then take us home. And this is again because we haven't defined what our initial exit and animate props going to represent. We don't have an animation such as you know fading out or anything. We're just going to define them and then it would allow us to transition those pages, but we're not necessarily ready to transition just yet. Let's go ahead and go back into the code. And then if we scroll to the bottom right here, we have this information div, which represents the name and the location of where the image was taken. So what I did in the final version was that I sort of just faded these out when we changed uh, to a different page. And to do that, we'll turn the parent, which is the information class name, to a motion component. And then from here, we'll add an exit prop, which when we exit out of this page, we want to just fade it out. So we're going to set an opacity of zero. We can also use the same transitions we've used up above for our image, and we can just add transitions equal to transition and save this. Let's go back in our project now. Let's head over to the home page, and I had to refresh there to go back. Uh, so what should happen is if I click, this should fade out. Go ahead and click in the image. It faded out and then it transitioned over to the next page. And that's because we've defined that exit property. We haven't defined any exit property here on this screen, so going home is always going to require us to fade out. So clicking will then fade the image, or sorry, let me go back. Clicking will then fade the text on the bottom and then allow us to transition, like so. If we are to adjust the duration to like three seconds, um, then it's going to take quite a while for this to fade out and then transition, and you'll see that here. So we also are adding that transition to the image, which is going to zoom in slow, but that's not what we're talking about. Clicking the image, We'll fade out the text on the bottom and it'll take three seconds. Once that three seconds is done or once the animation is done, we're then switching to this page. Okay, so there's a lot of cool stuff that you could do. Easiest option almost always is just sort of like a fade out effect. Uh, and then we can also add that to kind of, I mean, everything really, right? If I were just to fade out this container for an example, uh, let's go here. So motion dot div and then for our container motion dot div and if we're to just copy what we did for our text right we added an exit of opacity zero and a transition of the transition ease this is the easiest way that you could kind of have like a fade out fade in effect um, for your page transitions. So clicking is just going to fade out that screen and then load this. But of course, it's not that smooth, right? Because we haven't defined any motion components within the model yes, I mean, the auto page. But if we do find, define any of, uh, fading in um, animation, it will be the initial, which initial will be set to zero, and then the animate will be set to one of the opacity. And that will just give us that basic fade out effect. So you can do very, very easy page transitions, um, honestly, really, really easily, which is really neat with frame motion. So we're going to reset that back to where we don't fade out, but then now we're going to switch gears to work on our model JS page, and then we'll add animations here. Now in our model JS page, what we're going to do is just primarily work with this image first. So let's switch gears. We're going to focus on making sure this image uh, kind of fits how our first screen looks like. Uh, what I'm going to do is just set an opacity of zero on the name, on the location, on the MUA, and MUA, or I thought it was MUA the whole time, I don't know what that means, but MUA represents makeup artist, I believe, and then this is her at, uh, the makeup artist for this model. So I'm going to hide everything and then focus on primarily getting a very smooth effect with the image, and then we'll slowly start animating everything else. So let's do that. Go back in our project, and very first thing we need to do is import frame or motion. So let's actually do that. 
going to import, we'll say motion from framer dash motion. And then here, what I'm going to focus on right now is just hiding everything and focusing on our main image. So I also want to make this parent a uh, motion component and then we'll define our initial animate and exit props because we are going to be using variants and if you don't know what variants are don't worry about it we'll get to that in a sec but just work with me here real quick the parent is going to be a motion component so we'll go ahead and make this a motion div motion component and then we're going to pass uh, some props so initial here we could define really whatever we want. Um, and then it, it kind of describes the initial animation. So to give you an example, this is not what we're going to do in our final uh, state, but to give you an example of what I mean, opacity will be set to zero. And then the animate will be uh, set to one opacity. So what's going to happen is that when we transition over, it is going to fade in. So transitioning the entire screen here just faded in. Let's go ahead and go back. It'll fade in, which honestly is, is pretty cool. I mean, you could do that if you want, but that is basic. We're not, we're not about that. Um, we're not going to have any effect on the entire parent. We're going to have transition effects on the individual elements. So I'm going to set it to where there is no effect at all, but then it's going to allow us to transition back and forth. Uh, because we do need to find define that exit prop. So initial will be just set to initial. Animate will be set to animate. And exit will be set to exit. Now, some people choose to, you know, change the names um, of these. And when you're using variants, you create a variable outside of the components and you define an animation. Now, typically variants are very useful when you're working with um, multiple animations that have the same effect. And you'll see that here in a second when we animate these letters. Uh, but an option that you could do is you could change the name of exit to out and you could change the name of initial to in. Uh, and this helps certain individuals um, in terms of um, you know, making things a little bit simpler for them. For me, I don't like that. I like sticking with the same naming conventions as initial animate and exit. I think this is just the easier way to memorize these. But again, you could change these to whatever you want uh, in order to best help you understand. So now that that's out of the way, if we go ahead and save it like so, we are then able to just switch between the two pages. Um, pretty easily. I mean, it, it works, right? There's no special effects here. But um, what we're going to do is just set the initial of opacity zero to everything except the image so that we could primarily focus on working with the image. Um, and I'll do that right now. We have this div of top, which represents the top half, and then bottom, which represents the bottom half, which is our image. What we're going to do is focus on the top half, right? So let's go ahead and grab this details div and then make it a motion component. Oopsie, we don't need that. We'll make details a motion component, so motion.div. And then we'll set the initial to an opacity of zero. And this, I don't know how to spell motion. Make sure you spell motion correctly. And if we take a look, what should happen is that this top half should fade out. And it didn't do that. Um, and that's primarily because I remember uh, telling you guys in the beginning that the transition only works when you actually transition from one page to another. And so when we actually do that, it's gone. But if we refresh, our elements are back and we don't want the an uh, animation to execute. Now that is primarily because if we go to, I freaking hate when my node modules folder just opens out of nowhere. Um, if we go to app.js and we have this initial false here, uh, that's primarily the reason why. So let's remove that as we're working through because we are going to need to test our animations frequently. So let's set initial to false. And now we should be able to refresh our page to see the effect. So if we refresh, we can see that the initial opacity is set to zero, hiding our element. We'll do the same for the name and the scroll for more. Actually, scroll for more isn't really in the way, so we don't need to worry about that. But for the name, I'm going to go over to our model right here, the class name of model, and make this a motion component, motion.div and then do the exact same to where we set the initial 
to an opacity of zero. And this will just hide the name as well so that we could focus on this image. So to create that effect, we need to set the initial of this image down here to the exact dimensions of this image here. So let's work on that. Let's find this image here and it can be found here in the frame single. So what we have here is in frame single, we have thumbnail single and image container signal or single. Uh, let's work on our uh, thumbnail sig single. Man, I keep saying signal instead of single. But for the thumbnail single, let's turn this to a motion. Aye, aye, aye. Don't save. Uh, let's turn this into a motion component. And then we will set the initial to where we can get it exactly the same as how our initial or the first page's image looks like. Uh, to do that, we are going to set the width to what the exact same width of our first one. And fuck six. Node modules is just pissing me off. I hate when it opens. But um, let's set it to the same width and height. Uh, to do that, remember I had in AppJS this uh, image details and image details being passed as a prop to both. So in model, we can use destructuring to bring in image details. Uh, we'll bring in image details and then we'll set the width to image details dot width. And we'll also we'll set the height to image width image details dot height. And if we save it and take a look, you can see that if we click uh, it's going to grab the same width and height of the original image, but it's going to push it down a bit. Uh, let's go back home. This is the home page, and then this is the model page. Uh, now we do want it to center because in our home, this is perfectly centered uh, vertically. So to do that, what we can do is for our Y, we can set the initial to negative 50% and select that. And then if we save and take a look, clicking on that will then center it perfectly to how our original image looks like. You can notice the scroll for more only appears on uh, the second page, which is the model page. Another thing we would want to do is in our image itself is to scale it down to an image of one. Uh, we also have the option to add a scale of whatever we would like. So. This is kind of not necessary. It seems a bit redundant, but I'll explain here in a second. So if we add our scale to 1.1 and save that, uh, you'll see that since in our original page here, uh, when we hover, it's scaling by 1.1. Um, and then let's say that we're scaled at 1.1 and we click, it's going to kind of save that uh, original scale, which was 1.1. Uh, but then this kind of does look a bit odd when we hover, if we click and hover off. So if we click and then hover off, then it kind of pops up in your face. So you've got two options really. You can kind of just set the scale to one or nothing. Um, and that way when you click and hover off, it's pretty uh, smooth in terms of the transition. Or you could have it to 1.1. So where maybe you expect the user not to hover off when they click, so they'll click and then it will be perfect in terms of the scale. So it's really up to you. I'm just gonna leave it at 1.1 for our example, but uh, do whatever you would like. Okay, perfect. So we've got that working correctly. Uh, we can work on the animate, uh, which will then turn this image into that full screen image and push it to the bottom. Let's do that right now. We can select animate, and here is what animate's going to do. We are going to set the Y to a zero, and I'm going to take this one step at a time so that we can see it happening. So when we refresh, you can see that first it's going to take that position and then it's just going to slide it down. Let's go ahead and switch again and it will just slide down. Then we are focusing on the width. We are going to select width and set the width to 100%, which will then stretch it out completely. So selecting the image, we'll then push it down and I hate the frame of motion transitions. Let's let's fix that right now. We'll do const transition. Actually, it's going to be quite similar to what we have at the home. So we'll copy and paste this. But then for the duration, we're going to switch duration to have 1.4. And then for the easing is going to be that original easing we wrote, which was 0 0.6, 0 0.01. 
negative 0 0.05 and the final one is going to be 0 0.9 let's scroll back down here and let's look for where we were working i always lose where i'm at right here okay so what we could do is just add the transition and we can add a transition similar to what we were doing before with the, you know, the transitions equals a transition. But if we wanted to extend it, uh, we'll use the spread operator. So here we can add the following. We can say transition is equal, or since we're using uh, object notation, not object notation, but since we're using uh, writing in an object, it's going to need the semicolon. Um, it's going to be the following. We're going to set delay to 0.2 and then we're going to use a spread operator and just bring in transition so that we can use what we have transitions as a the ugh, such as the duration and the ease and then add delay to that perfect uh, so let's save this and take a look all right sweet so clicking we transition to that which is perfect uh, we're going to work on the height though because the height doesn't seem quite that good what we're going to do for the height is it's going to be sort of responsive. Now this is a quick way to write responsiveness for uh, when you're working with animations, but this is not the perfect way by any means. I would recommend you to find a hook or create a hook that determines browser or viewport resizing and then uh, simply just uh, have some sort of hook that runs and updates the uh, for example, in the height property here, it's going to update the number dependent on, you know, the browser size. So definitely go find a hook out there. But in this case, an easy, easy, quick solution is just like window dot inner width. If the window inner width is greater than 1440, then we're going to set the height to 800. Otherwise, we'll set the height to 400. Again, this is just a demonstration purpose only. I would recommend to use a hook, um, like a resize hook or something, to determine when a browser has resized and then just update the numbers on the height. So we'll set the height to, since we're working on something greater than 1440 pixels, we'll set the height to 800. And we've got that, perfect. So let's go ahead and transition to this. And it's going to transition here and then the height will be 800 pixels, but we need to work on getting her uh, face as a subject and not her hair. Uh, we could do that through this image right here, the motion image. We're going to animate the following. We'll say we want to move the Y, right? So again, similar to what we have for the height, we're going to say the window dot inner width. If it's greater than 1440, then we are setting this to a negative 1200. Otherwise, we're setting it to a negative 600. And this is going to push the image up so that we can see more of her face, like so. Um, it'll be a lot smoother here. That is not what we want at all. But let's see if we can we can fix that. Um, so we're looking at this, right? The window dot enter width, if it's greater than 1400, we're setting this to a negative 1200, negative 600. Let's work on the transition and the transition is going to be the exact same of what we had up there so we could just do transition delay and then extend transition like so so we can head back here and then let's click on it and perfect so we've got the image handled correctly we can then work on the text and everything else to add the final effect awesome so again, what we did was for our initial on the parent of the image, we kind of replicated it, replicated it to look like, um, I don't even know if that's the correct verbiage, but we made it look like how it looks like on the home screen as an initial. And once we load that page, we're animating it into its final state, which is this. Let's go ahead and work on the text next. And uh, from there, we can kind of conclude Actually, no, we are adding additional frame or motion effects, such as when we scroll, depending on the scroll position, we're zooming in and out the face, which is pretty neat. So let's keep on going. Okay, so with the text, what we're going to do is use variance. And what variance allows us to do is, I'm just going to read the definition. Uh, it targets objects are useful for simple, single component animations, but sometimes we want to create animations that propagate throughout the DOM and orchestrate those animations in a declarative way. We can do that with variance. So a lot of the times when we want to work with staggering or multiple children, 
we'll typically refer to variants. And the reason we're doing that is because we have a name, which is the model name here, but we've got several children, such as each letter. And this creates a stagger effect. Now I know that there's some JavaScript libraries or a way to kind of destructure or uh, break down, not destructure, but just break down a name or a string into different letters. But honestly, I'm not going to install anything or work beyond my means to do that effect. I could just do that by just adding several span tags, which is much easier. So what we're going to be required here is to turn everything into a motion component, which can take quite some time. I already made the motion, motion component for the model, which is setting it to opacity of zero just to hide it. Um, that's done. Let's make a motion component for every single span tag. So I'm gonna just skip through here because this will take too long. All right, so once we have motion components for everything, we are then going to work on our variants. To create a variant, we're going to scroll to the top and we're going to do uh, two variants. One variant is going to be called the, uh, actually three variants. One variant is going to be called the first name. The second variant is going to be called last name. And then the children is going to be called letter. So let's go ahead and do a first name. We'll do a variable called first name and it will be the following. We will define the initial and the initial of all of our um, items such as the first name is going to be set to a zero and then the animate will be set to a y of zero and looking at it now having animate set to y zero i don't think we need an initial let's leave it for now but we might be able to delete it let's do transition and what we want to do is we want to delay children which is going to be each letter by 0.6 we want to stagger the children by 0 0.04 and then stagger direction is going to be negative one, which means that it will go from right to left instead of left to right. All right. So to use this first name, we're going to go to our first class name and we're going to pass a variance and set it to first name. Let's work on our letter next. So const letter is the following initial is going to be set to a y of 400 and then our animate will be set to a y of zero and then the transition will be the following duration is going to be equal to one and then we're going to extend the transition like so don't forget to add a comma between initial and animate and then to pass the variance we'll pass it along each letter that we have so we'll say variance is equal to letter Let's save this. We can also get rid of this initial opacity zero that we had uh, for, you know, just hiding it. We don't need that anymore. And let's go back to our project now. Uh, we got an issue. We have a span tag here, which is right here. We need to turn this one to a motion.span. Okay, perfect. So this static right here is in the way, which for now it's fine. But when we refresh, you can see that the yes mean, the way it comes in, it's coming in from right to left. And because of that overflow hidden on our parent, you can see that it is kind of hiding behind something as it's coming up. Let's do the exact same thing from for the thotic or the last name, but it's going to go now from left to right. So to do that, we'll copy exactly what we did for first name, except we'll just change the name to last name and the direction to one, leaving everything the same, honestly. Uh, let's go to the variance for our last class name and then switch it to last name and then for our span of each individual letter is going to get a variance and set that to letter like so and now you can see that it animates up in a very beautiful manner perfect um again let's check out if we even need this initial Let's go ahead and erase that. We don't, we don't even need that initial because we're animating to Y of zero. Perfect. Um, what we're going to do next is, do we even need Y zero? I'm, I'm just experimenting right now. Let me see. We don't even need Y zero because we're mainly using the variance on the parent to add a, a sort of stagger effect on the children. And we're not even animating the parents, which is first name and last name. 
So all the animations coming from each individual letter. Perfect. We'll then work on the latitude, longitude, and the makeup artist name, and the scroll for more. And that should conclude all the animations, and then we'll add the effect for the scrolling. So we'll scroll to the top to where we can find this details motion component. And for the details motion component, it is going to have an opacity of zero for the initial, and then a Y of 20 so that we push it down. And then we're going to animate to the following. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to set the opacity to one and a Y of 20. And then we're adding a transition of the following. We're going to give it a delay of 1.2. And then it's going to extend what we have for the transition. Transition's not defined like so. All right, perfect. Let's go back in our project and refresh. Awesome. So let's go home and then click on the image. Perfect. Let's do it one more time. So it seems like this is not animating up the details section. Um, and that's because the animate is set to 20 instead of zero. Let's go ahead and try now. So you can see that it fades in and up now. Awesome. Last thing we're going to do is a scroll for more. And the scroll for more is a different component. Here we go again, the Snowden modules. Uh, to access that, we can go scroll for more JS. We can import motion and we'll import this from framer motion. Um, and then what we're going to do is just turn scroll for more is parent div, which is this class name, into a motion component by writing motion.div. And then for our initial, we'll set the following opacity of zero. And it's going to be the exact same that we had for the details, the Y of 20. And then it's going to animate to the following. We are going to set the opacity to one and the Y to zero and the transition. Give it a delay of 1.2 and then it will extend what transitions is like so now transition isn't defined but we'll just copy and paste the variable into scroll for more now typically you don't want to keep copying and pasting or you don't want to write you know in our case here we wrote transition like three or four different times what we'll do instead is probably just define it in our parent or in the app js and then share it across each individual component, um, you know, passing it down as a prop. But we know about that already, and it's not necessary in our example here because we're just making mainly working on fair motions transition effect. But you don't want to keep copy pasting transition. Just create one definition of the transition variable and then pass it down to each uh, child that uses it. So let's go back in our project now and let's switch pages, and everything animates beautifully. Last thing we're going to do is make this image zoom in and out depending on our scroll position. I also want to do one more thing. So now when we transition to this page here, I can already start scrolling and it does mess up the effect a little bit. Uh, it's not really all that ideal. What we want to do is just lock scrolling up until the animation is done and then allow the user to scroll. Uh, this is definitely a preference. Uh, some people prefer it, some people don't. So just keep in mind, you don't necessarily need to do this if you don't want to. Uh, let's go in our project now, and we're going to be working in our model JS. What I'm going to do first is work on adding a scroll effect to the background image, which allows us to zoom in and out. To do that, we're going to utilize two things. We're going to use the use viewport scroll and use transform from framer motion. We need to be in model JS. Import use transform and use viewport scroll. Let's scroll down to the model component. And to use the scroll Y, what we're going to do is use the structuring to bring in scroll Y progress. And this is going to use the use viewport scroll. And now these are all uh, part of Framer Motion's motion values. And the use viewport scroll, what it's, what it's going to do is return a motion value that updates the viewport scroll depending on where it's located. Uh, so it'll return the Y 
um, of our viewport scroll, like the position. And uh, it will start from a range kind of. So if we're at the very, very top of our viewport, it's going to be zero. And if we scroll to the very bottom, that's going to be one. All right, so then what we'll do is the following. We'll create a variable, uh, in our case, it's going to be called scale, and we'll use transform and we'll provide it different ranges. So writing it out makes a bit more sense. I'll say scale is going to use transform. And let's see what transform tells us. It tells us that it's going to create a motion value that transforms the output of another motion value. All right, so we'll use transform. And the first argument we pass is our scroll y progress. So this is going to be a number between zero and one, and this will determine if we are done scrolling or not. And then with framer motions, uh, use transform or kind of their motion values set up, we are going to pass two arrays. Now the first array is going to be a number from zero to one. And this kind of just represents uh, where our start and finish kind of is. So our start is at zero, our finish is at one, and this is true based on our scroll y progress. And then the next thing we pass is another array which provides sort of the values that we wanna give. So since we are animating the scale, uh, we wanna set the scale to one when our scroll y progress is set to zero. And then when our scroll y progress is at one, we wanna set the scale to 1.15. All right, and I'll give you another example with opacity here in a second. So to use this, we're going to scroll all the way down to our motion image. Let's see if we can find it right here. And then we're going to pass style. And this is just a style prop, but we're going to update the scale uh, with the scale variable that we provided up at the top. So let's go back in our project now. And you can see that once I start to scroll, it's scaling this image here to uh, the end result, which is at 1.15. So you can see as I zoom in and out, it scales it. Now we could do the exact same thing with opacity, right? So if I were to turn the opacity here and then scroll at the top, we'll leave it at it called scale. Um, actually, we won't because we don't want to confuse people. So if we wanted to do opacity, we'll turn the names to opacity. We'll leave everything the same, scroll Y progress, it's either zero, it's a number um, between zero and one. And then our ranges are between zero and one, but then the results are different here. We'll say that we'll start at an opacity of one, and once we start reaching the end of the viewport scroll or scrolling down, we wanna start fading out the image, which is an opacity of zero. Let's go back in our project. Now that we're at the very top, it's an opacity of zero. And you can see once I start scrolling, it's going to fade out the image. All right, so we've reached the very end of our scroll that's going to fade out the image completely. And once we reach the very top, it will fade in to an opacity of one. So it's a really neat effect because what we could do is we could scale the image and in this name, we could fade it out as we start scrolling. And once we've scrolled past that name, we could just fade it out completely, which gives it a really neat effect. I'm gonna control Z all of the changes that I just did so that we set it back to scale and then once we start scrolling, it's going to scale the background image. Very easy to use, very, very, very handy. Last effect we're going to add is not allowing the user to scroll until the image or the animations are completely done. So to do that, we are going to use a few things. We are going to import use effect and use a state from React. We'll say use effect and then use state. All right, now scrolling to our component here, let's create new state. And this state's going to be called can scroll. And so this is going to be true or false if the user can scroll or, or not. So we're going to say set can scroll. And we're just going to use state. So initially, we're uh, going to say that the user cannot scroll. So we'll set that to false. That's weird. I don't know why it's blue. We'll figure that out here in a second. But then our use effect. All right, let's get that imported. Is going to be the following. Now, in Framer Motion, we can create a or use a callback that runs every time the animation is completed, and we'll just add that to our parent. So to do that, what we can say is on animation complete, it will then execute uh, this function. So we'll say not function, but we'll just update the state. We'll say set can scroll will update that to true. 
and when set can scroll is updated to true it is going to allow the user to start scrolling now here we'll just have an if statement and say if or we'll say can scroll um, is equal to false we'll do the following we'll grab the document dot query selector and we're trying to grab the body but we'll just add a class class list dot add and we'll add no scroll and this is just a simple if else statement and over here we'll class list dot remove no scroll so no scroll is already a class i created in css or in sas that will not allow us to scroll the document on the body which sets the overflow y to hidden i believe it what it is um, and then our dependencies is going to be can scroll so if can scroll changes it's going to then or the can scroll dependency right here if it updates then it's going to allows us allow us to uh, run the use effect if that makes sense so let's test that out actually right let's go back home and then we'll click the image and then we're trying to scroll and we can't and then once the image is done we can scroll it happens the same if we refresh we can't scroll once the image is done we can start scrolling but to finish everything we go back to app.js where are you app.js and we set initial to false so that we can only have a page transition when we're going from one specific route to another so we can scroll unless the animation is complete. And this also helps with if we don't have any animations to run at all. For example, if we refresh, no animation runs, uh, but then we can still scroll, all right? So that is, I believe, everything. I think that's gonna do it here. Uh, one last thing that we could do is if we don't want a full screen here, uh, we could just add a container fluid, or we already have fluid, but if we just get rid of fluid, and save that and then it's going to be right here so we could still have that same effect where it's just going to move down here so it's just a different look uh, it's all really preference on what you like the most i think i prefer a container with a fluid which will stretch it out across uh, that's going to do it for me if you did enjoy please leave a like don't forget to subscribe in the next video we're going to take a look at 3js shaders so that we can add some wobbly effects uh, some you know different cool effects on this image so take a look at that uh, next week uh, that's going to do it for me have a wonderful day guys stay safe out there take care